These are denim jeans built for Japanese bikers, also considered to be the highest quality, most durable denim jeans on earth. Well, apparently, but also maybe not. These jeans are almost as thick as two pairs of Levi's, which by the way, Levi's sued this brand in 2007. Anyway, super thick jeans, yet somehow people say they feel like sweatpants. They are more detailed, more well thought out, built to a higher standard than any other jean. Of all of the expensive, rare, and weird jeans that I have reviewed over the past years, one brand has a cult following unlike any other. They have their own forum, their own club. And those incredibly tough, rebellious, and oftentimes dangerous people are people just like me. That's right, everybody. Michael Christie, part of the Ironheart Army as of today. The brand is, of course, Ironheart, and this is Mr. Haraki, AKA Boss. I've never read an article, never seen a comment, never seen anybody talk about Ironheart and Mr. Haraki without calling Mr. Haraki a genius. He's a genius, this is a genius. What he does is genius. I've never heard of anybody else being called a genius as much as Mr. Haraki, so I wanted to find out why, and I bought my first pair of Ironhearts. So I made a secret Reddit account, and I went onto r slash raw denim, and I said, Hey fellow denim lovers, it's me, userboy346. I'm trying to figure out what's so great about Ironheart. Can anyone help me? Thanks! And I really expected people to start gushing and say, you don't understand how the denim is made, how the fabric is this, how this is that. But they didn't. And for the most part, they said, eh, nothing too crazy. But after doing a ton of research, I believe them to be wrong. There is something very special about Ironheart that we need to talk about today. Let's get to it. Today's agenda. Number one, we are looking at Ironheart's most famous jean ever. The first one, the 634S. Number two, we're going to go over every single feature of these jeans you may not expect to be in jeans that makes Ironheart so legendary. Number three, the Ironheart fork in the road. People that think Ironheart is brilliant. People that think it's all hype. And finally, Ironheart has a trick up their sleeve that nobody else has. So what is it and why does it make them the greatest? The raw denim world, rebirth, movement, whatever you want to call it, that happened in Japan changed a lot since it first started and Ironheart was pivotal in one of the biggest changes in the world of raw denim. This is Ironheart's original fit, the 634S. It's timeless, it's straight, it's not super wide, but it's wide enough. You can wear it whenever and not look out of place, and I think it's based off of a 1955's Levi's. But these jeans have all the fixings. One of them is my butt. The back pockets on Ironheart jeans are wider than normal, and that's so you can sit on your motorcycle without having your pockets feel weird, and so you can reach your wallet a little bit easier. Sorry, there's one more butt-related thing. Usually on modern jeans, you don't need hidden rivets anymore, but if you look at these, You'll see there are hidden rivets and at the same time, the back pockets are also bar tacked, which gives us two layers of redundancy so your back pockets don't rip off. And then of course we have the legendary Ironheart denim, the mythic magic denim that makes the beast. I can't talk about it until we talk about a few other things to get up to speed, but when you put these jeans on, you definitely think, wow, these are some of the heaviest jeans that I've ever worn. They're stiff, but not crazy stiff. People say it feels like sweatpants when you put them on. I don't know what type of sweatpants you are wearing, but it is comfy, it is soft on the inside. We'll talk about that because that's a very important thing that has to do with the denim. You can't deny that Mr. Haraki's genius comes from the denim that he designed and then made. It is arguably some of the most important denim ever made in Japan. But in order to truly understand that, we have to go back in time to the Osaka Five, the original five raw Japanese selvage denim brands that started it all and then it will make more sense. Ready? Watch this. I'm going to butcher five of the most important raw Japanese salvage denim brands names of all time. Evisu, Full Count, Studio de Artisan, Denim, and Warehouse. That is the Osaka Five, the originals. But arguably, there are two Japanese denim brands that are even more important to Japan than the Osaka Five. If the Osaka Five are the kings and the royalty of raw Japanese salvage denim, their parents, or their grandparents, their mommies and daddies, are Edwin and Big John. They started Japanese denim in general in the 1940s. Each member of the Osaka Five has their own thing and they make denim in their own way. Some are trying to recreate Levi's from the past, others are just going super artsy fartsy like Ivisu, but none of them did denim like Ironheart did in 2003. This ad is brought to you by the Little Tiny Baby Wrist Club. This is the Veyer USA Assembled D5 Tropic Automatic Watch in 39 millimeters. It's a very solid diving watch rated for 200 meters of water resistance. <clears throat> Hello everyone, my name is Michael Christie, President, Founder, and Chief Officer of the Little Tiny Baby Wrist Club. Something you may not know about me is that I've been working in the wristwatch world for seven years, so I know watches, and I know baby wrists. 
In fact, I have two of them myself. The D5 has a workhorse Japanese automatic movement on the inside, strong loom, and not a roulette wheel, which is when the date would, every other day would be red or black. Every four days, the date is red, and all the other days are black. And I'm excited to announce, as president and founder of the Little Tiny Baby Wrist Club, that this watch comes in under 40 millimeters, at 39 millimeters. And if you are part of the big, huge, ginormous Wrist Club, this watch also comes in 42 millimeters. Really cool brand. I'm really hoping Bayer wants to work with me again, because I would love to check out the R1 Chronograph and the 36 millimeter automatic Dirty Dozen homage that they have. Sweet stuff. Thanks for sponsoring the video, Bayer. Thanks again, Bayer. Link is in my description, and you can use my discount code to save 10%. But none of them did denim like Ironheart did in 2003. Mr. Hodaki, boss, the guy that started Ironheart, I hope I'm saying his name right, by the way, so sorry if I'm not, is a powerhouse in the world of Japanese denim. He started from the very roots as a pattern maker at Edwin and knows every single tiny little possible detail that goes into making a pair of jeans. He didn't go the traditional way that the Osaka 5 did with denim weights, how heavy, how stiff the denim is. He designed his denim for the Japanese motorcycle community and then built his jeans around that. But instead of focusing on vintage recreations of fabric he focused on durability beefiness stiffness and what goes into the motorcycle aesthetic of big heavy hogs with all that being said here are the 10 things that i think make ironheart special what differentiated it at the time number one ironheart's signature denim came out of the gate super heavy super hard but not rough it was still comfy to wear on your leg two the main thread on ironheart jeans is polycore thread so the outside is cotton the inside is polyester that means it still looks like it's aging like cotton but it's much stronger because of the polyester core three although this was not on the first iteration of the 634s the belt loops are now tucked into the waistband which adds another layer of redundancy and strength Four, hidden rivets. Five, I'm just gonna read this one to you. On some jeans, we use 13 different types of threads per jean. For example, the looped threads on the inside of the hems use a finer thread than the outside, so they have less stress on the needle. And the pocket designs use a cotton thread, so that design will get destroyed over time, while the structural threads will stay intact. Six, oftentimes Ironheart uses natural yarns on the weft, so they look beige, not stark white. Number seven wide back pockets. Eight, they use long staple cotton fibers. Originally Zimbabwe cotton, but then that turned out to be very unethical, so now they use long staple American cotton. And long staple fibers, as I say all the time, are great because there's more friction when the yarn is wrapped, so it's stronger and more durable. Number nine, they make their denim more fade resistant somehow. They won't tell you how, but somehow. And number 10, we're stopping here because I added a bonus, number 11, but this is what I think is the DNA of all Ironheart denim. Why the denim molds to your body, why it feels soft even though it's so heavy. Any magical thing that you attribute to Ironheart denim is because of the double twisted weft yarns. The weft is the inside, the white part, the beige part of the jeans. And instead of using one thick yarn, which is used to make heavyweight denim, you can twist two thinner yarns and make something equally as thick, as robust, but it's still soft, it molds to your body, it's more durable in some cases, and that I think is the secret sauce. And finally, number 11, overdying. Nobody overdies quite like Ironheart. It is their art. It's gorgeous. So one, why are people so obsessed with it? What is the actual hype behind all of those features? And two, why do some people say there is no hype? That's it. The real benefit of Ironheart is they are distinctly not what you're used to when you're getting into the world of denim and denim in general. They are heavy, they are beefy, they take a lot of time to break in. You know you are wearing a unit of jeans when you put them on. I was looking at my phone in my pocket and even just seeing the way the denim went around the phone, you could tell these pants are beefy and everybody knows but also at the same time, heavyweight denim does a lot of the work for you in terms of styling yourself. These jeans have a life of their own. They build their own silhouette on your legs. They're not swishing and moving about. They look the same on almost everybody. So they make you look masculine, which is the Ironheart customer. Although looking at me, you may think, are you sure it's the Iron? Oh, and one note, sorry, I forgot one more thing to say about why for Ironheart is they also have the genius pitch with Mr. Hiraki. The idea that there is this genius behind the scenes adding all of these things, moving all these things, changing everything to make the most durable, perfectly constructed jean in the world is very attractive. And this is a quote from a guy we'll talk about in one second. He says, we are involved in the product from the very start to the very finish. The cotton is specified by Hiraki to perform a certain function. The yarns are spun to his specs. The warp is dyed to his specs. The jeans are constructed to his specs. There is hardly an aspect that Hiraki does not take a personal interest in making sure it is as good as he can make it. Knowing all that is happening, very attractive to anybody. I There is some, well, I'll talk about it in a second. Ironheart does have a trick up their sleeves still, but why do some people not see the hype? Why is it so different between people that love it and don't like it? The issue is 
Ironheart exists. Ironheart essentially paved the way, made the blueprints for heavyweight denim four threads that you can use for really obscenely well constructed jean. So now in 2024, a lot of that stuff is standard practice. Like I had just, I talked about strike gold jeans, which are 25 ounces, four ounces heavier than this, but they felt rougher. They felt way beefier and thicker and denser. Ironheart does have jeans that are heavier than this, so they may feel comparative. I haven't compared them, but there's immediately another brand to compare to and think like, well, I like this heavyweight from Strike Gold versus Ironheart's. So I'm not saying Mr. Hodaki and Ironheart were the end all be all, teach everybody everything, nobody else knew how to do anything. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that if this is the circle of raw Japanese denim, Ironheart poked it out a little bit and learned something new or started to learn something new and Ironheart is the gold standard, but now other brands can do it as well. I'm trying something new. I'm saying goodbye now before the video's over because all of you click away before I can say thank you for watching. So thank you so much for watching. It means a lot to me. Anyways, the one trick up Ironheart's sleeve is a man. That man's name, Giles Padmore. Giles Padmore. I think it's Giles. Giles Padmore. Sorry. I'm, there's also one more thing besides Giles that makes Ironheart what it is, but Giles is a genius. Everything he did to bring Ironheart's international outside of Japan is brilliant, and I think it will one day be studied by marketing experts or whoever it may be on how to build a rock solid brand. Giles essentially took the Ironheart philosophy on how to make a product and put it into a store and made not good customer service, not unreal customer service, but unbelievable customer service. This is a great time for me to say this is not sponsored by Ironheart. I bought these jeans from Self Edge. Self Edge is great. Naked Famous is great. Pure Blue Japan is great. Oni is great. But the Ironheart UK shop, if you talk about Ironheart on Reddit, the shop comes up. How unbelievable the customer service was, how much help they had. Ironheart International runs its own forum that is still incredibly popular even when Reddit killed all the other super talk or whatever it may be denim forums. There is an Ironheart cult and army because of how Giles distributed Ironheart to the world. But you may be thinking, Michael, what is that one trick up their sleeve that they have you have not spoken about yet? It's the, well, hold on. This is a terrible lighting. It's that they successfully took the formula that made them so great in the world of denim, super high quality, robust, top of the top line, and they spread it out to their product line, and it was successful enough to make Ironheart not just a denim brand, which a lot of the raw denim brands get stuck into. It's like, well, they also make flannels, but you know, their denim is what you're after. Ironheart has their flannels, their N1 deck jacket, their shoes, the leather version of their jacket, Jackets. Everything that Ironheart makes has a cult following to it because it's built to that crazy standard and people are going after that crazy standard and Ironheart is like a gold seal of approval for that. And I will say, ordering these and waiting for them to arrive at my door and stuff, I've never had Ironhearts before, I did definitely get the feeling of like, ooh, I'm gonna put on my Ironhearts. I'm just gonna wear my Ironhearts. So there, there is something there.